Hello, my name is Frank Adamo, and I'm a licensed amateur boxing federation coach. The gentleman standing next to me is Emil Griffith, six-time world champion and Hall of Famer, also trainer of world champions. And together, we are going to teach you to box and put you in the best physical condition of your life. It is a well-known fact that boxers are the best conditioned athletes in the world. Have you ever wondered how they seem to throw endless punches and said to yourself, wow, these guys are in some shape. If I hit the heavy bag for 10 minutes, I'm exhausted. That's because people quite often buy a heavy bag before they've properly conditioned themselves to work out on it or learned the proper way of working out on it. In this first tape, The Boxer's Workout, we will demonstrate, explain, and talk about how to get in a boxer's condition. If you have no desire or aspirations to become an amateur or professional boxer, but would like to be in great physical condition, this tape is still useful to you, and we recommend you follow the program we have outlined for you here. All exercises should be done five days a week, Monday to Friday, with Saturday and Sunday for rest. I stress, rest is as important as your workout. There is an old saying in boxing, 90% of winning is conditioning, and 90% of conditioning is running. So if you expect to get in the condition of a boxer, you will have to do your road work. If you have never run before, you may not like the idea of having to run. This is the most important part of your conditioning. Running cleans the body of impurities, it enables the lungs to hold more oxygen, and stimulates the cardiovascular system. This means your stamina and endurance increases and you are healthier. Now for how to go about this. I recommend at any age walking three miles first and then at a slow pace start to run one mile and work your way up to three. Maintain this as your daily road work. Always start with a slow pace. You are better off if you run slow and finish your distance than if you run fast and don't finish your distance. Do your road work on surfaces that give so as not to promote knee or lower back injuries or shin splints. I recommend running in such places as parks where there is soft grass or dirt, possibly bridle paths or boardwalks. After you have become comfortable with running three miles, you would now like to include sprints in your road work. After having warmed up your body, run at top speed at a desired distance. At the end of sprinting, go back to maintaining the pace prior to the sprint. Your normal pace should quicken as time goes on. Run in sneakers specifically made for running. Do not wear heavy boots or ankle weights. When there is weight on the ankle, it lands harder on the surface, causing shock to the shins, knees, and lower back. Always breathe in the rhythm through your nose with your mouth closed. When choosing the place for your road work, choose a place where you will like the sights. Since you will be running there five days a week, you won't want to get bored. High school tracks when running these distances daily tend to be very boring. You just go around and around. This may make your road work unpleasant and discourage you. Always remember to stretch before and after your road work. The best time to do your road work is in the early morning hours. The air is fresher and cleaner and the pollution level at its lowest. Most boxers run in the morning, then go to their prospective jobs and then to the gym after work. Now let's talk about calisthenics. Your road work should reach three miles before beginning calisthenics. We will start with the more basic and more familiar exercises. 
let's start with push-ups. I recommend doing your push-ups with the hands placed below the chest next to the rib cage and work your way up to 30 reps one set. Do as demonstrated. On upside down push-ups, I recommend 15 reps one set. If you cannot do the prescribed amount, do what you can and work your way up to this. Do as demonstrated. Now let's move on to abdominal exercises. You have to work your abdominal as two separate muscle groups, upper and lower. For the upper abdominal, twisting sit-ups with the knees bent, 30 reps, one set, right arm to left knee, left arm to right knee. Do as shown by Heather and Melissa. If you find these sit-ups difficult, imagine how Mark and I feel with Emil Griffith looking over us, watching our every move. And as if that's not bad enough, Jojo Moore sits in the background behind Emil, and he also watches our every move. Jojo is the one who taught me to box. Here's something Jojo likes a lot more than watching us do sit-ups, watching the girls do sit-ups. To leg raises. Lay prone on the floor with the toes pointed straight ahead. Raise your legs approximately 12 inches off the floor. Spread them, bring them back, lower them again approximately 2 inches from the floor. Do as demonstrated. On to twisting crunches. When doing twisting crunches, raise up your body, raise up your legs, right elbow to left knee, left elbow to right knee, continuously, do as demonstrated. If you have access to a Roman chair, I recommend 30 reps and one set of Roman sit-ups. It works both the upper and lower abdominals. Here world-class boxer Eddie Davis demonstrates the Roman sit-ups for us with Jojo and Emil and myself in the background. Now with all that abdominal work, you will need to strengthen your lower back. Hyperextensions are the most popular and effective exercise for the lower back. Make sure your legs are secure as you lie face down. Bend at the hips with your hands clasped behind your head. Slowly lower yourself down and raise yourself back up to a prone position. Work your way up to 30 reps, one set. And here John demonstrates hyperextensions for the men. 
You know, he's doing it so high and he's trying to touch the ceiling. But that's very good for him. It would develop his back muscles better. And I am very proud to say that I am the one who taught John to box. Now on to neck conditioning. A strong neck is very important to any boxer, for it is the neck combined with his conditioning that will enable him to withstand blows to the head. Lay down in a prone position with support only up to the shoulders. The neck and head have no support which enables them to move freely. If you have someone to help you, as Emil helps Eddie here, this will give added resistance. If not, you can do it without the resistance. Now on to rope skipping. Skipping rope is very important to every boxer. It promotes hand, eye, and foot coordination. It also puts spring in the legs, and as in running, stimulates the cardiovascular system and promotes stamina and endurance. If you have never jumped rope before, I would suggest jumping with two feet together, up and down as demonstrated here. After having become more comfortable with this method of jumping, Try shifting your weight from one foot to the other while lightly touching the toe of the opposite foot to the floor as demonstrated here. After this, you can begin the more advanced rope techniques such as crisscrossing. The key to crisscrossing is folding your arms while jumping and unfolding. Attempt this as demonstrated. Also double jumping where the rope shall cross over you twice before your feet touch the floor. Also do as demonstrated. And here's the champ, Emil Griffith, jumping rope. I have to go back on the diet. Now let's talk about diet and vitamins. Now that you are going to be getting into shape, you will of course have to eat properly. At this stage, you do not need such a strict diet, but you should eat properly. I would recommend eating three well-balanced meals a day with an equal amount of protein and carbohydrates. I would also recommend keeping away from junk food, such as cake, candy, soda, etc. I highly recommend that you drink a great deal of orange juice, which is a great natural source of vitamin C. If you are overweight, I recommend eating a grapefruit with your breakfast and a grapefruit with your dinner. And if you can stand it, sucking on a lemon in the evening. Both are great sources of vitamin C. Vitamin C is very important in helping the body recuperate after a workout. When working out like this, the body loses precious minerals and vitamins. I recommend taking vitamins. There are all different kinds of vitamins, but I recommend multi-packs. Tell the clerk at your local health food store the type of workout you are doing, and they will assist you in making the right choice. Be sure and take your vitamins daily, even on your rest days. Take your vitamins after breakfast, as this is the best time to take them. Now let's move on to your stance. Your stance is important so that you will have balance while boxing. Your hands are to be held high as demonstrated, with the right hand open and turned out, and the left hand held up. The knees are bent with the left leg forward and the right leg back, if right-handed. If left-handed, do all things opposite of what is being explained and demonstrated. Keep the knees bent at all times. Lift your shoulders up, keeping your elbows in. Keep your chin down, 
Arch your upper back so your arms cover more of your body and protect your head at the same time. Always keep the knees bent. Never straighten them out at any time. Always be relaxed. Do not be tense. I know you feel awkward, but you and your muscles must get used to this new way of coordinating themselves. Give yourself three minutes in this stance, the equivalent of one round. Now we are ready to learn how to punch. The problem with most beginning boxers is that they try to punch too hard or too fast. Take your time. If you start slowly and keep good form, you will be doing yourself a favor. You cannot use speed or power without first properly having learned to channel it. Always remember, this is a very repetitious sport and you will be doing many things over and over before you begin to feel comfortable. Remember, practice makes perfect. Punches should be thrown loosely, not pushed, but with snap. Trying to hit too hard will cause you to be tense, so stay relaxed and just try to snap punches right off the shoulder. When throwing any punch, your wrist must be flat from hand to forearm. Your knuckles, if throwing a left jab, turned out slightly to the left so as to make impact with the two four knuckles. The hand, wrist, and forearm must always remain level. The left jab is the most important punch of all. It is the most important punch because it sets up all the other punches but also serves a dual purpose of keeping an opponent off you. If the punch that you will want to master. When throwing a jab, the shoulder, shoulder blade, and hand move all at once, then the body comes in behind. Slowly throw out the jab and keep the elbow in. Be sure the shoulder and shoulder blade kick out as demonstrated. Be sure to tuck the chin down and that the shoulder covers the jaw and the right hand stays up in position. Do not drop it. Now pull the shoulder and shoulder blade and hand back in always as fast as you throw out the punch so as to avoid being counterpunched. You must always keep your elbows in to avoid being hit in the body. Never drop your hand after a punch you will be counterpunched in the time it takes you to bring it back up. Now your body and hip must turn sideways as the jab is thrown. The legs are loose but secure. You must push off the rear leg and put yourself back in position with the lead leg as demonstrated. Do not hit anything with this punch. You will need to loosen up, work on this slowly, and make sure you do it with proper form. Do not straighten out your lead leg as you throw the jab. You will find yourself reaching and off balance. This also means you will be counterpunched before you are able to gain your balance and natural stance. I recommend working on the jab for one week and then moving on to the next punch. Boxing matches are won and lost off the jab, so be sure you learn it well. Let's talk about basic footwork. When moving forward, push off the rear leg and make sure the lead leg moves first as demonstrated. If you are a right-handed boxer, your rear leg is the first to move when moving to the right. The left lead leg moves first when moving to your left, and the rear leg moves first when moving back. Never move straight back. You will give your opponent momentum in his punches if you move straight back. the champ, Emil Griffith, gives you a demonstration of footwork.
Here, Emil Griffith demonstrates footwork with punches. And as you can see, he appears to still pack a pretty tough wallop. Thank you. Let's try stepping with the jab. Step and punch simultaneously. Glide the left foot forward while pushing off the rear leg. Turning at the hips and the shoulders. Bring the lead leg back into the neutral position and repeat this two more times. Do as demonstrated. When double jabbing, throw two jabs in succession. When throwing the jab, make sure to keep the right hand in position. Do not drop it like you're seeing here. Here is the correct way in which to throw the jab, keeping the right hand up at all times. If you drop your right hand when jabbing, you will be counterpunched, as the champ counters me here. If you keep your right hand up, you will be able to guard against the left hook to the head. Keeping the elbow in, you'll also be able to guard your body. Now let's move on to the straight right hand. You should have worked on the jab at least a week and be somewhat comfortable with the jab now. Never pull back to throw any punch. This is called telegraphing because you're telling your opponent it's coming. Always throw your punches from where your hands are in your natural stance. When throwing the right cross, the hand is high and open as shown in this stance. The right shoulder and shoulder blade kick out. The hand closes as it is thrown and crosses the face. Again, the shoulder, as always, covers the jaw with the chin down. Turn the hip with the shoulder and bend the lead leg slightly. Do as demonstrated. Continue working on all punches as you learn new ones. Be sure that when you throw the right hand, the hip comes in behind it. When throwing the right hand, pivot with the rear leg as shown here. this one-two combination while stepping. Now let's move on to the left hook, provided that you are comfortable with the right hand. When throwing the left hook, lean over slightly to your left while keeping your right hand up and twisting at the waist. Spring up while twisting the hips, keeping the left hand in position. Raise the elbow to a level position as you come up so that upon impact the forearm is level. Throw this punch as if coming up and slamming a door. When throwing the left hook, make sure the lead leg is inside your opponent's lead leg. Be sure to practice this with all other punches five days a week to have a good progression rate. Here's the left hook again from another angle. Drop this punch in on your opponent.
Here the champ observes me as I'm pivoting while directing me on how exactly he wants me to pivot. When throwing the left hook, pivot on the lead leg while keeping the rear leg firmly in place. Do this as demonstrated. Here the champ watches over me as I demonstrate the left hook for you. This is a full shot putting the hip, pivot, and hook all together. Work on this one week and then come back and we will work on the next punch. Now we move on to the left uppercut. Please do not move on to a punch before properly learning the prior one. I recommend looking in a mirror also so you may observe your body in position. When throwing the uppercut, the legs bend fairly low and they shoot up as your arm punches at the same time. Keep your arms in and your hands up as you go down and let the punch out only a few inches as you throw it. Make sure your fist is turned inside and your wrist, fist, and forearm are level when you throw this punch. When throwing the left uppercut, you will dip down with your guard up, push up with the legs, and throw the punch. Be sure the shoulder blade kicks out as in all other punches. When throwing the right uppercut, you must dip and twist at the hips as you come up and deliver the blow. Make sure the hips turn so that the hip is into the punch. Do as demonstrated. Here's the right uppercut from another angle. When throwing the right uppercut here, we demonstrate how the shoulder blade goes into the punch. Be sure your shoulder blade is kicked out on all punches so as not to arm punch. Here is the right uppercut in a full body shot where you can see how the whole body works together as the champ looks on. Now let's try putting both the left and right uppercut together as in a combination punch. Now let's try it a little faster. Now let's try the overhand right. When throwing the overhand right, you will dip similar to the uppercut, but will bring the right hand over the top of your head. This is a punch you will use mostly against a tall opponent. It is a punch you will try to sneak in on a taller man. Do as demonstrated. Now let's talk about defense. Nobody ever won a fight taking a punch. As my trainer once said to me, it's not what you can take, but what you can get away with. Your stance is designed for defense. You hold your right hand open so you can catch punches similar to catching a baseball. Your elbows are held in at all times so you can block body shots. Always remember to keep moving. A moving target is harder to hit than a still one. 
Never try to ward off punches by extending your arms. The only time you are open for a punch is when throwing one. Therefore, extending your arms opens you to be hit. Your legs are very important to your defense. They get you out of troubled areas. Always keep your hands up. If an opponent is close to you, you can always grab him around the outside of his arms and tie him up to keep him from hitting you. We shall go into greater detail pertaining to defense a little later on. Here is a demonstration of how punches are blocked. The champ throws jabs and right hands while I block them with the right hand. Now we are ready to learn to properly wrap our hands. Hand wraps can be bought at most sporting goods stores and you will also need hockey tape. You can join a local gym or buy your own boxing equipment. Boxing equipment is only expensive when you buy everything at once. If you buy things as they are needed and you have the space to work out on them, that's nice. But if you cannot do this, you can write to the USA Amateur Boxing Federation for a list of gyms in your area. Joining a gym is fairly inexpensive. Now assuming you have hand wraps, take the loop on the end of the wrap and place it over your thumb. Wrap your wrist three times as demonstrated here. Now take the wrap, go around the thumb, and wrap your thumb as demonstrated. Now take the wrap around the heel of the hand and wrap the thumb again, as you're seeing here. Now take the wrap and bring it across the palm of the hand, around the back of the hand, across the inside of the hand, Wrap the knuckles three times. Be sure to keep your fingers spread very far apart. Now take the wrap and bring it across the back of the hand and wrap your wrist with the remaining wrap. Not too tight or you will cut off your circulation. Have someone tie the wraps for you. Take a piece of hockey tape about four inches long, tear it into three equal strips and repeat this one more time for your other hand. Spread your fingers as far apart as you can and place one strip at a time between your fingers. Place the tape on the outside of the pointer knuckle, go around the 
inside of the hand, then the outside of the hand, then bring it around the outside of the hand and wrap the thumb with the tape. Now bring it around and wrap the wrist securely. Not too tight or you will cut off your circulation. The purpose of wrapping hands is to ensure you do not break your hand while making impact. Always warm up with shadow boxing. Now on to shadow boxing. Shadow boxing is how many boxers warm up their bodies. As you see here, little David Kahn and myself shadow boxing in mirror. The mirror is very good for shadow boxing because you can observe yourself throwing the punches. Start off slowly and work your way up to a vigorous pace. By then your body should be warmed up and you should be ready to begin working out on the equipment. Here, Eddie Davis, world-class boxer, demonstrates shadow boxing as he warms up with Emil Griffith looking on. As John works the heavy bag in the background, Sammy hits the speed bag, and Mark works the other heavy bag. first piece of equipment we will work out on is the heavy bag. The heavy bag helps build punching power and endurance. Now let's do a conditioning exercise on the heavy bag. Move close to the bag in position as David has shown you. Let the punches drop in on the heavy bag in the fashion of uppercuts. Do this for three minutes, the equivalent of one round with a minute's rest. Here Melissa uses the heavy bag for the conditioning exercise while Emil holds the bag for her. And now John gives us a demonstration for the men. Here John and myself demonstrate how to use the medicine ball while Emil looks on. The medicine ball is used to condition a boxer's abdominals so he is able to withstand blows to the body. Now for another demonstration of what you can also use the medicine ball for. One, two, three, four, five, what is it? Two, three, four. Five, down. Up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, down. Rest. Up. We're going to go to your left and then your right. Ready, go. One, stop, no. You pick it up, you take it to your left, stop in the middle, you come to your right. Mm -hmm. Ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, rest, stop. Here Melissa demonstrates another good conditioning exercise for the woman two jabs and a right hand while Emil instructs her. He explains to her how to turn the punch over and throw it straight. Many women have been getting involved in boxing for some time now as a conditioning exercise, not necessarily to get in the ring and put gloves on.
Now let's move on to circling. Hands in position, up on your toes, knees slightly bent. Begin circling to your left. Do not bring your feet too close together or you will have no balance if hit. Now change direction suddenly to the right. Continue to change direction suddenly while shortening your distance. This side to side motion will condition you for lateral movement and help body movement. Never be tense, keep your hands up and do as demonstrated. And now for a demonstration of how this will help you in actual combat. As you can see, this exercise is one that will get you out of trouble. Now for bobbing and weaving. Get in a boxing stance and bend the knees. Go down low and come up to your left. Go down again, come up to your right. Use your legs and not your back. This will condition your legs as well as help your defense. Do as demonstrated. Do each of these exercises for two three minute rounds. Here is a demonstration by Eddie Davis of how to slip a punch by using the bobbing and weaving method as Emil looks on. Here Eddie Davis demonstrates how to counter punch while using the bobbing and weaving technique. Here it is again from another angle. Let's move on to the side to side exercise. Get in boxing stance and bend over to your right with your hands up. Bend back to your left and repeat. This exercise shall strengthen the muscles on the side and lower back as well as help your defense. Do as demonstrated. Two minutes for two rounds. Here is how side to side shall help you to slip punches. Here is a demonstration. Here's a demonstration of counter punching. Eddie catches me with a right. Here I miss, Eddie misses, and then Eddie is counter punched by me. We shall go into greater detail a little later on on ring techniques. But for now, let's put the punches you have learned to use by throwing combinations on the heavy bag. Here are some demonstrations of combinations. Time. Double jab. Double 
double jab, champ. Double jab, right hand. Right hand, left hook. Good boy, do it again. There you go, double hook behind it now. Oh boy, do it again, I like that. All right, give me some jab now. Again, come on. Under and over. Yes, now this time do it with the hook. Under, over, hook. That's it. Two hooks next time. Let's go. And step away with the jab. Come on. Take your time. Get, get, and the jab. That's it, come on. Keep jabbing, keep jabbing now, now take your time. Keep jabbing now, keep jabbing. Take your time, keep jabbing. One, two. Again. Oh, boy. All right, now. Move up, move up. Dance away from him, dance away from him. Dance away from him. And jab, dance away and jab, that's it. Dance away and jab, take your time, take your time. Dance away and jab. Under and over. Good, now give me a good combination, go. Oh boy, keep it up, keep it up. Give me a straight right hand now. Bang, again. Bang, right hand left hook. Okay. After giving the champ a soft touch in David, we talked him into going back on the bag with John. Left hook right hand. Left hook right hand. Under over. Under over. Jab, jab. Two jabs. Two jab right hand. Two jabs right hand. Double hook. Combination to the body. Come back to the body. I quit. Now on to the double end bag. The double end bag, as my trainer Jojo Moore once said to me, is an educated bag because it will hit you back. You will want to box this bag as well as slip and block it. Hit it with lots of jabs and combinations. This bag is excellent for timing and body mobility and also increases hand speed. Like everything else in boxing, it takes practice. Here is a demonstration. ways to work the speed bag as well as many different sizes of speed bags I think someone beginning to work the speed bag for the first time should start with a larger to medium sized bag we will show two ways of working the speed bag the speed bag helps timing and helps build the shoulder muscles and also increases hand speed now try slowly hitting the bag with the side of the left hand and the side of the right hand do not drop your hands because you won't be able to get them up in time to keep in rhythm. Work your way up to two three minute rounds. You may prefer this method of hitting the speed bag. Another way to work the speed bag is to hit it with the front of the right hand immediately with the side of the right hand, then the front of the left hand and immediately the side of the left hand. Gain a rhythm and continue this for two three minute rounds. Here we have Melissa and she has very nice rhythm for a lady. For a lady, she works it better than most men I know. Come on, one, two, one, two, come on, one, two, keep it going, keep it 
Punch mitts are good for sharpening up punches and warming up before a bout. You will need another person to hold them for you. This person puts their right leg back, holds the mitt on the right hand, flat towards you. The left hand is held sideways with the mitt, so the hook can be delivered there. Now work on them with combinations and always throw lots of jabs. A more experienced person can let you throw combinations then swing a mitt at you while you slip it and come back with a combination. Now here's a girl with a good right hand. Here, longtime number one contender Eddie Davis demonstrates how to work the punch mitts with champion Emil Griffith. Eddie fought for the title three times. In one fight, beating Michael Spinks, many people felt, but he was not awarded the decision. As my little friend David is going to knock me out right now. Here Eddie pivots on the lead leg and counters me under and over. Here it is again, under and over the jab. When in fighting, your head will be on your opponent's left shoulder, and his head will be on your left shoulder. Your feet are planted firmly on the canvas, and you will dig to the body. In fighting is where a great deal of body punching is done. Watch your opponent and see if he leaves his head unguarded. 
You may want to bring a hook or a short right hand to the head. Mainly you will throw uppercuts and hooks when infighting. Here is a demonstration of infighting. If you're in a little bit of trouble, the smart thing to do if your opponent is close enough to you is tie him up. You would do this carefully and quickly by grabbing around the outside of his arms with both hands holding his arms. He cannot punch at you. You will also want to lean your weight on him. Let him do the physical work while you get a little rest and clear your head. When turning an opponent, you will want to reach down and grab him with the inside of your glove by the elbow and turn him away from you. Now your opponent is not facing you and you can counterpunch him. Here Eddie turns me. To cut off the ring on your opponent, as he moves to his left, you will go in the same direction while taking a step closer. When he moves to his right, you will move to his right while taking a step closer. This will enable you to corner your opponent and finish him. Here is a demonstration of cutting off the ring. Now for a demonstration of sparring. Here Eddie Davis and myself demonstrate a sparring session for you. In order to spar, you will need a headgear, 16 ounce gloves, a mouthpiece, a cup and kidney protector, along with boxing trunks and boxing shoes which are optional. When sparring, the idea is to control your opponent. Box him, put all the techniques you have learned together and let them be utilized in this sparring session. The object is not to knock your opponent out, but rather to control him. Here, you will notice as Eddie and I box, it is not at a very quick pace. Professionals tend to relax and take their time and be more technical with what they're doing. Amateur bouts are boxed at a much quicker pace because amateurs only box for three rounds. Naturally, you would like to do the best you can and as much as you can within that three round period. Therefore, the energy level is higher and the pace much quicker than you are seeing here. Eddie, who is 30 pounds heavier than me, was nice enough not to attempt to knock me out while we boxed here. While I was a young boy growing up in boxing, I was fortunate enough to have Eddie and his brother John in my gym. They were both world-class fighters, both had fought for the light heavyweight titles, and they were willing to move around with the younger guys in the gym to give them the experience of moving with a world-class boxer. Naturally, Eddie and John had a great deal of experience to offer us. We therefore took advantage of it. I would not recommend walking into a gym and moving with a pro if you are an amateur boxer. Most professionals are not willing to move very easily with amateur boxers. All sparring should be done under the supervision of an adult. Here, Jojo Moore, both Eddie and my trainer, watches over as we box. Emil Griffith is also off on the side of the ring. Jojo proudly watches two well-trained fighters that he can take the credit for having trained. He calmly watches Eddie while Emil screams and hollers at me. Be sure to throw your punches in combination when sparring. Never throw one punch at a time. It is too predictable and your opponent will be able to counter punch you when only throwing one. The more punches you throw, the more you will give your opponent something to think about. 
When not punching, he will be punching you, so stay busy. Remember, do not attempt to knock your opponent out. You are only sparring to fine-tune the skills that you have learned. Be sure not to ever cross your legs when sparring, or you will have no balance, and you will be easily knocked down. Now it would help you to know what weight class you fall into. Now for a list of the weight classes, amateur and professional. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope that you and your children have enjoyed this tape. And we hope that you're in much better shape, too. Oh. Take care. Thank you.